situation where history is repeating itself. Because almost in this very square, which was 370 years ago, there was an organisation called the Levellers, just after the uh, Civil War, who came along and said, no man should be king. That's actually an important statement, and all men should be treated equally. That's a statement that we want equality and a better society. And that's what I'm trying to get across today. But what we've had for the last 20 odd years now is the idea that greed is good. That individualism is the way forward. It started, I think, with Margaret Thatcher in 1979. But since that time, not just in Britain, but all over the world, we've had growing inequality. People are getting poorer in relationship to the new super rich. It's becoming systemic within our system that that's the way we should organise ourselves. But it's quite simple, it's not the way we should organise ourselves. It's a backward step in terms of history. I never believe there's ever been a golden age for equality. But when you look after the Second World War, you can certainly see that things were better from the 1940s, 50s, especially in the 1960s, in terms of the equality in Britain, an opportunity for people. But since then, since that awful day on the 3rd of May 1979, when Margaret Thatcher was elected, we've had Thatcherism. And that's not just in one political party. Governments that came after Thatcher have actually had the same credo all the way through. And what has it amounted to for Mr. and Mrs. Average in the situation? We've had the sale of all our utilities just sold off to the super rich and so that they can use that monopoly position to squeeze people and to make push down their living standards and make massive profits. I know it's topical to be talking about bankers and to bash the bankers, but really that is an illustration of exactly the situation we're in. It's not Mr. Mannering from Dad's Army, you know, a vision of a banker in the 1950s. Now we have people with slick suits who go out with one objective, to make the maximum amount of money for themselves, and they'll take any risk to do that. We have hedge fund managers who we know were the core of the crisis that we had in America and in Britain, and the effects of that since 2008 have been obvious on everybody. It's not just one or two bad apples. It's not the aptly named Bernie Madoff, these types of people who rob people of their money. We have it now almost within the system that you try to avoid tax. Corporate greed has got to many organisations. Here in Oxford, we've got Vodafone. They actually owe £320 million for all these corporations who are not paying their tax. That's not tax avoidance. That's where they should have paid, the amount they should have paid. But it's built in, into the system, that they'll get out of tax. They'll not pay their whack. They'll not be part of our society. And they will try and line their own pockets. At one time, we thought of politicians as people who were there for the public good. They came there for a reason, to do some, uh, something for their own constituency or their own ward locally. But we've had now a whole series of politicians who've been there clearly to line their own pockets. From duck ponds to fiddling second homes, you name it. And they've put forward their expenses. And this isn't one or two. When the Daily Telegraph exposed those people two years ago, it was actually hundreds of MPs who have got into that mould that they are the ones who are going to benefit from being where they are. That's not what politicians are about. We seem to have drifted from um, somebody like, um, perhaps, uh, like Gandhi to avaricious people like Tony Blair. An equal society is a society where people actually uh, are better off, healthier, and they're happier. That is a proven academic fact. That's the sort of society we want, and that's the direction we should really go. Thanks ever so much. Thank you.